Hey guys, in this section we want to take some of the concepts we learned from section 1 about logarithms and use them to solve equations, solve for variables. Specifically, the two rules that we're going to be using in this video are this ln of a to the x equals x ln a, the rule where you can bring out that exponent. And then the other one that we'll be using once is that the ln of a product is you can break it up into the sum of the lns. Right, and so I'm going to be referring to these two rules as one and two throughout the video. Now let's just start with an equation that we already know how to solve that we don't need to use logarithms for, and we'll draw some parallels to this as we go through the video. If we had an equation like this, we'd simply subtract two from each side, get five x equals ten, and then x is still kind of stuck with this five, but to get rid of the five, we can just divide each side by five, right? And so we'll get x equals two. So this is an equation where we don't need logarithms. But let's look at one where we are going to need logarithms and kind of figure out why. So where is the variable in this equation? We're trying to solve for t, and t is kind of locked up in this exponent, right? So we can try to isolate it a little bit, which, which we do want to do by dividing each side by that 3. So we'll get 5 thirds equals 2 to the t. But we can't really unlock this t from the 2 by just dividing. Right? And so we're going to do something we saw in video one where we're going to take the ln of each side. So we'll take the ln of 5 thirds equals the ln of 2 to the t. And then we can use that rule one to bring that exponent out to the front. So we'll have the ln of 5 thirds equals t times ln of 2. And so why is this better? Well now this is kind of like that equation we had up here, right? When we had 5x equals 10, we have t times some number equals some number. Remember that these lns are just numbers. And so to solve for t, all we need to do is divide each side by ln 2. And we'll get t equals the ln of 5 thirds divided by ln of 2. And so if you type this into your calculator, you'll see that t is about equal to 0.7, oops, sorry, 0.737. Okay, now that one wasn't too bad, but the, 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 big, the big key here is that if your variable is locked up in an exponent, you can take lns to get them down, basically, right? Let's look at one that's a little bit more involved. So notice we, now notice we have the, our variable in two different places. And so we can try to isolate one, right? We could divide each side by the four like we did before, but then this side is still pretty bad. So what do we do in a situation like this? Well, the answer is still basically the same. We need to use the logarithm to get these variables out of the exponent. That's, that's a big problem. So let's take the ln of each side and kind of see what we can do with it. So we have the ln of three times two to the t equals the ln of 4 times 5 to the t. And so now notice what we have here is we're going to apply that second rule I wrote above. Here we have a term that we're going to call a, we're going to call this whole term here b. If we do the same thing here, we notice that we have a product of a times b, a product of a times b, and we can break up that ln. So right now we'll have the ln of 3 plus the ln of 2 to the t, and here we'll have the ln of 4, and here we'll have the ln of 5 to the t. And the reason we do this again is so that we can use that rule 1 to get the variable out of the exponent and bring it down, right? We can move that there, and we can move that there. So once we do that, then we'll have the ln of 3, so some number plus t times some number equals some other number plus t times some other number, right? All these lns make it look bad, but basically we can use the same ideas that we've used in algebra to solve this equation. So we'll want to group up the terms with t on one side, so these two terms, and then we'll group up all the other terms on the other side. So we'll have ln of 3 minus the ln of 4 equals t ln 5 minus t ln 2. And so to solve for this, we'd have the ln of 3 minus the ln of 4. And on here, we'll, we'll pull out that t. So we'll have t ln 5 
minus ln 2 in parentheses. And so to finally solve for t, we can say t is equal to the ln of 3 minus the ln of 4 divided by the ln of 5 minus the ln of 2. And so if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get t is about equal to negative 0.314. So about negative 0.31, if t was in years, it'd be about 0.314 years before the time you set for t equals 0. And so let's look at one final equation here that you'll see something like this every once in a while. It's not actually harder than what we've done already, but it may throw you for a loop. So here we want to solve for t, but notice we have this nasty p0 here. So let's try to interpret in English what's going on. So we have this exponential growth problem with a continuous growth rate of 0.02. So k is equal to 0.02. And we have some initial value that we don't know, right? And so we're trying to fig find how many years it's going to take to get to half of that initial value, right? And so, you know, understanding what's going on is good, but when it comes down to the algebra, let's kind of try to apply the same concepts we applied in, in example one. So we're going to try to get this thing all by itself. So the way we do that is we would divide each side by P0, right? And once we do that, we're going to see, oh, look, the P0s here cancel out. And the p0s here also cancel out, leaving me with 1 half equals e to the 0 0.02t. And now to solve this equation, I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to unlock my exponents by taking the ln of each side. So I'll take the ln of 1 half equals the ln of e to the 0.02t. And now because of rule 1, this whole exponent's going to come out to the front, and I'll have the ln of 1 half equals 0 0.02t times the ln of e. And now, if I didn't, if I didn't understand what the ln of e was, I could just divide each side by 0 0.02 times the ln of e, and I would get t equals the ln of 1 half divided by 0 0.02 times the ln of e. And now why is this writing a little bit too much? Well, the ln of e, as we actually learned in video one, is just one, so we'll have t is equal to the ln of 1 half divided by 0 0.02. If you type that into your calculator, you will get t equals negative 34.66.